All right, so we are going to start talking about the Illinois Constitution. Just as a couple of reminders before we get started, this is my name spelled correctly. This is my correct email address. This is still a problem. Don't know why, but there it is. Uh, we covered federalism if you're in the online anytime class. If you are in the in-person class, it's our system of government. It's how the United States operates today. There are the voters who make all this stuff happen. We vote in a central government in Washington, D.C., a regional government, the state government, another regional government, your local government, so you're the governor, the mayor. If you have a really zealous county, you know, maybe a county board commissioner. So we're citizens, quite a few things. We're citizens of the United States. We're citizens of the state of Illinois. We're citizens of, in your guys' case, East Peoria, Peoria, Morton, uh, Metamora, one of those towns. You're citizens of... Um, your county, too. So the Illinois Constitution. So in 1787, way back when, the United States Constitution set up a federal system of government. A federal system of government. And we're going to go over this if you're in the in-person class. And if you're not, you should already know what this is. Um, but that would certainly be a test question. Of government giving some powers to the national government and other powers to the state and local governments. So the U.S. Constitution says, okay, each state, you've got to go set up your own government, write your own constitution. But that constitution has to be similar to ours the people of the state that you are seeking to set up, in our case, Illinois, they have to elect their representatives, just like you elect us to the U.S. Congress, to the White House, et cetera, et cetera. So Illinois became a state in 1818. Well, that was on the pretest that threw some of you. Uh, 1818, not 1848. One of the requirements, again, it had to have its own constitution before it could become a state. That was one of the requirements. It was constitution, population, borders. You know, there's a whole a couple things that were being looked at. Um, the current Illinois Constitution, our fourth constitution, was adopted and ratified in 1970. And we have a short preamble to our Constitution in 14 articles after that. Now, we do it a little differently in the state of Illinois, because why wouldn't we? You know, just be different. So the U.S. Constitution, they have amendments at the end in a separate part. So they'll have Article One, Article Two, et cetera, et cetera, and then the Bill of Rights. We put the amendments in the Constitution of our state. They're made to the articles they're made inside the sections so they're written in and this gentleman uh, if you didn't know his name's Shadrach Bond he's the first governor of the state of Illinois so 1673 the Illinois territory is discovered by Marquette and Juliet they claim it for France the British win the territory in the French and Indian War. And after that, George Rogers Clark captures the territory for us, the colonists, during that Revolutionary War. And in 1787, uh, the Illinois Territory is officially created uh, by the passage of the Northwest Ordinance. And we managed to become the 21st state of the Union on December 3rd. 1818. We've had three capital cities. One, Kaskaskia. Two, Vandalia. 
And now Springfield. This is almost certainly a test question. What were the capital cities of Illinois? I would probably try to remember more Kaskaskia and Vandalia. If I ask you, Springfield's a little too easy. I think. Anyway. We've had four constitutions, as I've said. 1818 was constitution number one. That was the adopted at the time we became a state. That lasted until 1848, where a lot of the positions that were there uh, became elected instead of appointed. 1870, our constitution's going to be in effect. We changed it again. It would be in effect for the next 100 years, and the 1970 constitution is still in effect today. And that, uh, if you've never been, is Springfield. Uh, that's the Capitol building. It's nice to go in, look around, have a tour if you've never been. If you're in Springfield looking for something to do. So the preamble. It's an introductory paragraph. That's all it is, which explains why the document was written. Uh, I put the preamble below. Uh, I would even, you know, if you're in the online anytime class, I would look up and maybe save a copy of the state constitution. If you're in my in-person class, you got a copy on Tuesday. So some of the wording is similar to the preamble of the United States Constitution. So we, the people of the state of Illinois, grateful to Almighty God for the civil, political, and religious liberty, which he has permitted us to enjoy and seeking his blessing upon our endeavors in order to provide for the health, safety, and welfare of the people, maintain a representative and orderly government, eliminate poverty and inequality, assure legal, social, and economic justice, provide opportunity for the fullest development of the individual, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense and secure the blessings of freedom and liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this constitution for the state of Illinois. Now, in the in-person class, we had quite a long conversation about have we lived up to the preamble? Have we, as a state, failed like right here, right at the beginning of the Constitution, no matter what the, the rest of it says? Has this happened? Now, that's a matter of opinion. Uh, and you can have your own. Uh, in the class, the overwhelming opinion was, no, we have not lived up to this. We do not have domestic tranquility in the state. Freedom and liberty, you know. Um, health, safety, and welfare of the people, meaning all the people were a little suspect, the students thought, and so on and so forth. So the Bill of Rights, the article, Article 1 of the Illinois Constitution states many of the individual rights and liberties found in the Bill of Rights of the U.S. Constitution. We have freedom of religion, speech, the right to assemble and petition, the right to bear arms, freedom from self-incrimination, the right to a trial by jury. Now, those should all be familiar to you. We have others, too. I've got a copy of the U.S. Constitution. Not, not the U.S., excuse me, the Illinois Constitution in front of me. Uh, there are crime victims' rights, Section 8.1, uh, imprisonment for debt. No person shall be imprisoned for debt unless he refuses to deliver up his estate for the benefit of his creditors, etc., etc., etc. The right of eminent domain. Private property shall not be taken or damaged for public use without just compensation as provided by law. Now, that's a federal thing, too, but it's not enshrined um, like it is in our Constitution. Uh, no discrimination against the handicapped, no discrimination on the basis of sex. The U.S. Constitution doesn't protect specific groups like that. Section 24, rights retained. 
the enumeration in this Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the individual citizens of the state. Now, that should be very familiar to you because that is lifted almost word for word from a, a certain amendment in the U.S. Constitution. So Article 1, we get due process, equal protection. Uh, that means everyone is entitled to the same basic rights and the same fair procedures under the law. Forbids discrimination on the basis of sex, the basis of physical or mental handicaps. That's not found in the U.S. Constitution. So one section, as I just mentioned, is eminent domain. So the government can come in and purchase private property for public use. Now, somebody could just knock on your door, need your house. We got to build a road through here. We desperately need this road. And I say, okay, uh, my house is valued at $200,000. No, no, sir or madam. Um, you don't get to determine the value of your house. You don't get to use your own property tax assessor or anybody like that. It's the government who's going to do that. So do you get $200,000? Probably not. I wouldn't think so. But, uh, you know, that's just kind of the way it is. The government, so if, for example, if a piece of highway or a bridge, you know, if a piece of land is needed to build one of those things, the state has the right to buy the land, if even if the owner does not want to sell. Now, the owner could just not leave. What happens if an owner refuses to sell this uh, this picture? This is in China, but the you know the point still stands. Well, they'll just build the road around it, whatever the impediment is. I don't think this is, would be a highly desirable place to live uh, once they put <laughs> the road in. So the powers of the state, Article 2. This divides the state government into three branches, the legislative, executive, the judicial. And these branches are the same as the federal governments. The legislative, which we call the general, excuse me, the general assembly, the executive, instead of the president, it's the governor and the lieutenant governor and the judicial, instead of the Supreme Court of the United States, it's the Illinois State Supreme Court. Article three, you get voting qualifications and election laws. If you want to vote, you have to be a U.S. citizen 18 years old, and a resident of Illinois for at least 30 days prior to the election. Now, that's always something students have been surprised at, um, but the, that the residency requirement isn't longer, but that's the way it is, 30 days. And you have to register to vote in the county in which you live. So I live in Logan County, I would have to register here. I am registered. It's important to exercise your right to vote. And we will pick it up here. So part two coming up.